Welcome back to the Two Minute Warning, episode 391. Back on the topic of college baseball. Yesterday, the Gators approved, or sorry, improved to four and two with a win over the Samford Bulldogs. So today, I'm just going to be giving you guys kind of a recap of that game. But before we get into that question of the day, in 2018, the Gators had a player uh, that was named Division One Baseball Player of the Year. Name that player. Again, if you know the answer, comment below. And if you don't, stick around to the end of the video. But again, today I'm just going to give you guys a recap of the game last night. Um, it was a game that <clears throat> Stanford by, by no means was not a good team, but Gators were clearly the favorite in that game. So it was kind of a game that Gators should have taken care of business. And, of course, they did win 8-4. to four. Um, But in my opinion, it should have been – it should not have ended 8-4. to four. Gators were up 8-0. Um, I think going into probably the seventh inning, um, then they you know, eight one and then eight two eight three eight four. It ended up ending eight to four. But I think the Gators should have dominated a little bit more on the mound for the Gators. Was Tommy Mace, of course, our ace. Um, I believe he went just over five innings through, I think, a hundred pitches on the dot. Um, from my standpoint, I was at the game and he did not really look that dominant. But of course, if when you're in his spot, you're number one guy uh, against a team like Sanford that is not the top caliber team it's hard to pitch to your to your fullest potential but uh his fastball command was a little bit off last night uh his curveball and his off speed command was actually there but when he got ahead in counts uh used his fastball he was thrown up a lot which caused him to then fall behind hitters and kind of have to work behind for most of the night but again he gave up no earned runs i think two or three hits at most uh so tommy mace did look good but i would like to see him of course gain control of that fastball and, and be able to go deeper in games than than just i think he went five and a third or I, whatever he did it was five or maybe six full innings but it wasn't as deep as you'd like to see for him to go 100 pitches and on the mound for the Bulldogs um Samuel Strickland a lefty who honestly looked pretty good last night but his defense didn't help him out at all the uh the Bulldogs had four errors Gators had two so defensively it wasn't really that clean of a game um Strickland ran a fastball up to 90 91 a lot of a lot of curveballs and a lot of changeups, and had Gators hitters off balance early but uh, our lineup, as you can tell, put up eight runs. We put up ten hits, uh, and then we really took care of business. At the plate, there was really not a lot of complaining. I, among our nine starters, I think two of only two did, two people didn't get hits. That was um, shortstop Josh Rivera, who actually squared up two baseballs hard, but right at people, and he was taken out And I think, the seventh. And then catcher Nathan Hickey didn't have a hit, but everyone has those types of games. Um, in the leadoff spot, Jacob Young kept his hit streak alive. I think he had he had a double and maybe a single too, but he he had a double there in in the sixth, um, in the two hole. Judd Fabian had an, an outstanding game. He remains on fire. Last night he had a double and a home run, and arguably had one taken away from him. He hit a ball to center field that was like 401 feet that that, that got robbed from him. So Judd Fabian swinging the bat as good as you can hope for right now, and he's got what three home runs in the last two games. He hit two against uh, University of North Florida there in Jacksonville. So Judd Faven swinging the bat well. Like I said, in the three spot, we had Nathan Hickey, who actually struggled, had a couple couple strikeouts. If I'm not mistaken, I think he had three strikeouts through three at-bats last night. So not a great game for Hickey. I'm hoping for a bounce back today. We're playing Sanford again at, uh, sorry, 4.30 today. It's today's Saturday. Um, in the four spot, I believe we had uh, Chris Armstrong. He actually had a pretty good game. He had an RBI triple there uh, in the fifth to kind of help us go ahead, and then the rest of the lineup really, really did swing the bat well. I think Jordan Butler had a hit. Uh, Colby Halter had an RBI. Uh, like I said, we had RBI by, by Judd Fabian in, in a home run. And uh, the game was really, the game was originally opened up by a nine-hole single from Jordan Carrion, actually one of our uh, reserve second, not reserve second baseman, but not the starter, I guess. Starting second baseman's kind of been jumping around through the first six games, so for, for all I know, he could be the starter from this moment on. But Carrion had a, a big bases loaded single early in the game, put us up 2-0. Fabian, the next inning, hit a home run, put us up 3-0, and we kind of carried it from there. So the Gators swung the bat really well. Sterling Thompson also had a triple, and then he scored on an overthrow. So so essentially an in-the-park home run last night. Um, like I said, triple from Armstrong. Uh, we had guys off the bench. Corey Acton had that bat, pieced the ball up. I think we were hitting the ball hard all night. 
Uh, Matt Cassetti had a hit. So a catcher off the bench for that came in for, for Hickey. So the Gators swung the bat as good as you can really hope for last night. Uh, as far as bullpen pitching, from what we saw, Tommy Mace, like I said, was while he didn't have full command of what I know he's capable of on the mound, he still was pretty much lights out when he, when he found the zone. They weren't touching him. He gave up a handful of singles, two or three singles at most, uh, but no runs. Uh, Sprout came in after him, uh, did give up a home run to uh, Tyler McManus of the Bulldogs. I think the first, or the first run of the game they scored was a home run to right center. It was kind of a shot, I'm not going to lie. Uh, so he, he did well, except for that. Sprout's been struggling with fastball command as well, and just overall command. So he does run he does run his fastball up 96 plus, but he does struggle with command a little bit. Then after that, we saw Hunter Mink come in, who also pitched pretty well. So the Gators pitching was overall was overall good, but we did have a couple errors mixed in that gave them some late runs. Like I said, uh, I think in the last two innings they put up three runs, which you'd like to see this a team that's as good as I know that we are kind of come in and just shut teams down like like a team like uh like Sanford that we are def definitely much better than like to see him come uh come out and beat that team I don't know 8-10 to nothing but overall the Gators swing the bat like they did last night you really can't expect or hope for much more they were like I said from one through nine they were swinging the bat very very well <clears throat> and Tommy Mace like I said, you expect him to be lights out, but in a game like this, it's tough to play to your, your full extent. So I, I like what the Gators are doing. Today we're playing them again. This is a series that we should definitely hope to sweep. But all in all, Gators come out with a win. It's always a good day, and they're playing again today and tomorrow. Hopefully they can go 3-0 in this series. Guys, that's all for the video. As far as your question today, our 2018 Gators uh, Division One Player of the Year was, of course, Brady Singer, one of the better pitchers in Gators, or one of the best pitchers in Gators history, is now playing with the Kansas City Royals. Guys, thanks for watching. Two-minute warning.